So, the translations are out for My Hero Academia 420. And unfortunately, unlike the title of this chapter, this chapter is not blazing it. But it's actually not as bad as many people may think it is. And we'll get down to brass tacks, but first, right after this. Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Mangam Andrew, and I'm here to do my review for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 420, titled From Aizawa Kun. And weirdly enough, unfortunately, this isn't coming out around when 420 is supposed to be out, so, or when the day 420 is, so unfortunately, couldn't do that but instead what we can do is really talk about how this chapter very much focuses on Aizawa as well as Yamada and their connection with Kurogiri as well as doing something that may rub the people the wrong way when it involves Deku and the return of fan favorite character Airy. and we'll just dive right into it and really talk about the issues that people may have with it and then I'll give my own thoughts on how I feel on the topic as well. So let's just start off with the Yamada and Aizawa part of this chapter. And to start off, yeah, most of this chapter is pretty much flashback, but the flashback that we start off in this chapter is getting to see what happened when Kurogiri arrived to save both Aizawa and Yamada. And Yamada, like he is, is very angry. He's hard trying to control his motions over what is going on with Kurogiri at this moment. He does not view this Kurogiri as Shirokumo and is just mad and is yelling and expressing his anger towards him and the fact that they can no longer find the war and that they should just get rid of Sh and how they should just get rid of Shiro Kumo or Kurogiri because he's nothing but a Nomu and a corpse. However, Aizawa may see a shining spark or glimmer inside of Kurogiri via a tear and Yamada fights against it by saying that I'm a man, I don't cry, but Aizawa has a little bit more hope in the fact that this individual may actually still have the aspects of Shiro Kumo as well as Kurogiri. And we just have present Mike Yamada just fighting against this idea, saying that they're no longer kids, that they cannot rely on miracles, but Aizawa just brings up a point that, yeah, but remember, he died as a UA student. And as teachers, we have to make sure that they are able to blossom because even though it was a one-time miracle, we are able to mix some of that blackness with a little bit of that white. So you could say the darkness with the light. And pretty much what Aizawa says is that we can never get rid of that darkness, that blackness, but we can always add more white. And he believes that the reasoning why Kurogiri was able to activate is because most likely than not, Spinner added a little bit more darkness but with their conversation about their time at ua their memories they were able to in a way awaken the white that was in kurogiri aka shirokumo and we see that in a literal representation where we see that kurogiri is able to show a little bit more white on his face showing that Shiro Kumo is still there and that that is most likely the explanation for how Aizawa was able to end up on the battlefield right next to Deku within the last chapter as well as what we get later on with communicating with Tsukachi realizing that Monoma is not able to fight but that they are still able to gather more heroes to fight against this individual that they perceive to be all for one. So yeah, if anything, the explanation for how they were able to use Kurogiri is very strong and I very much enjoyed it because it characterizes both Aizawa, Yamada, and even Kurogiri Shirokumo as being something closer than just using each other for their own benefits and gains. That the care that they had for Shirokumo is the same or similar care that the characters or the villains had for 
Kurogiri, really showing that they are all people and they all have their origins rooted somewhere and that those origins dictate how their lives are being built and that those origins, even though are different, can still have similar results when it comes to how they feel towards others. So it's very interesting to get this representation of a core theme of My Hero Academia when it comes to connecting with people, when it comes to Kurogiri Shirokumo. And from here, this is where we get to see what actually Aizawa did with Kurogiri Shirokumo. And at this point, I think I'm just going to call him Shirokumo just for easier of my brain remembering between those two names, but also because now that the white is showing, most likely he is Shirokumo than he is Kurogiri. So I'll just call him Shirokumo. So we see that Aizawa uses Shirokumo to go to the different locations where heroes are present. They go to one location where ectoplasm is, where you have Aizawa asking for any active heroes that can come and help in the fight. As we get to see that Death Arms, after his resolve has been regained to be a hero, volunteers. And a cool Easter egg is that we get one of the characters from Horikoshi's previous failed manga to actually come in and also volunteer to fight. And it has this fun line of saying, yo, I may not be famous, but I am a hero. And I think that's just a very cool reference for Horikoshi to put in his work because Horikoshi is very much known for his references and we'll get one famous reference at the end of the chapter that you can probably tell and understand where it comes from if you are a fan of superhero movies especially superhero movies that have come out within the past i'll say around five years but what's even more heart-wrenching about this entire scene in this flashback is that you have the individual as well as multiple individuals who doubted deku but we literally see one of them the one who was most vocal when Deku was trying to return to UA, literally giving up his shirt, the clothes off his back just to help Deku, and that not just him, but all the other people within this facility that has been watching Deku fight with them, and the ones that most likely saw and heard Deku and Ororaka's speech are now trying their best to help and taking off their clothes and giving the hero supplies to help those who are injured. What I enjoy about this the most is that this is showing that everyone can be a hero in their own special way. No matter how small of a thing that they give, it can be beneficial to the heroes. And that is going to tie in more towards another character, very specifically Eri, towards the end of the chapter. But yes, as that is all happening, we actually finally get the conclusion to the group that is fighting at Taco Bowl National Stadium, where we see that they are fighting against Gashley and his uh, baby tree, where it is revealed that this is probably the worst individual for them to fight as a group because Gashley benefits from fighting in long groups for long fights. And yeah, this is probably the reasoning why they sent a whole bunch of heroes here being led by individuals from class 1B, specifically Tokage, but that most likely what they are doing in this moment is overwhelming Gashley, who is very beneficial in fighting large groups using large numbers of these baby-like things by literally countering it with another large group of heroes fighting against him. And with that, the flashback ends with Aizawa coming in saying that they're starting phase three of the divide and conquer operation, where this is the reference that I was talking about, where we get to see a whole bunch of portals forming around the area where Deku and presumably all for one in Shigaraki's body is, where you have him talking about how, oh, do you want me to make you quirkless as well, as you just have Deku as well as Aizawa just trying to understand what is happening, where Deku Deku is trying to comprehend who this individual is, that he believed that it started off as all for one, but then Tomer Shikaraki appeared, which means all for one the person should have disappeared completely. But yet when he hit the core, he believed that he should have gotten rid of Tomura as well as all for one. So he has no idea who this individual is. But with that, we also get the reveal that a little girl named Ari was able to benefit to this fight alongside the other civilians by literally cutting off her horn. And this is probably the most divisive part of the chapter comes in. And 
I can explain how I feel about it, but let's just explain the situation. Barry cut off part of her horn, saying that she knows that she cannot go to a dangerous place, but that she still wants to give a piece of her to the battlefield to help, and that this is due to ectoplasm literally helping her cut off her horn. And there's a few points of this that kind of tracks, where it makes sense that part of her body can actually have an effect of rewind, as we saw with All for One using part of Ares' blood reconfigured to allow his body to fully rewind indefinitely. But we also know that just having some of her blood can just be very effective and rewind very specific parts or very specific aspects of a human body. So this situation isn't like any of the previous ones. Many may compare it to Ed shot with the bubble because this is something that we have established that Aerie can do. And they even explain that the reasoning why it's not as bad as we think is because even though earlier on a few chapters ago we are told that airy doesn't have enough energy stored up in the horn it's more or less to imply that it cannot be used in conjunction with her actual kirk to be very effective at healing but that it can still in theory heal it would just take longer most likely the implication is that she doesn't have enough energy to instantly heal Deku, but that it would take time for him to heal. Which I guess it makes sense for that to be the case, especially on a battlefield where you need to be healed up quickly or you could potentially die. And whether or not you agree with whether or not that should be the case and that Deku should have gotten his arm back, I think the execution of it is that I'm okay with. Because it's Aerie literally potentially damaging her quirk, sacrificing part of herself to save Deku, which is something that both Deku and the other heroes are pretty much doing right now. And that even though her goal isn't to be a hero, but is to sing due to hearing Jiro sing, she still wants to be of help to Deku and the other heroes and that wants them to return so that they can hear her sing, which is most likely the goal that she had in mind when she tells Deku that she knows what she wants to do in the future. That is probably why I'm okay with the way that Deku is getting his arms back. I think that this is a little too quickly in my opinion, but I think that it was done fairly well to the point where I can get over the fact that Deku lost his arms one chapter and then immediately regained them the next. So that was my thoughts on the Aerie and Deku regaining his arms, but just to conclude what this chapter is about, the chapter ends with many individuals, especially the individuals of class 1A, coming out of the portal who come from very different locations across the battlefield convening at this point to go multiple on one against all for one as the chapter ends and we're unfortunately on break next week so yeah overall i think that this is a good chapter it does have its issues and its gripes from me personally but they're not enough to take away from the enjoyment of the series as well as this chapter I like the characterization and how Kurogiri Shirokumo was used and how this is affecting the characters within the story in both a literal plot way but also in a characterization and character development kind of way and kind of connecting both the heroes and the villains together in a way that we probably wouldn't have expected. And that while yes we are getting a whole bunch of heroes through this portal there could be a very likely possibility that the Kurogiri could also transfer the villains to the same location, but instead of the heroes and the villains fighting each other, they will be going up against all for one. And while this may not necessarily solve all the problems in the series by defeating all for one, it will be building bridges to a better future by showing that the villains are very much still people and that the heroes can see the villains as people. And while I am somewhat middling on the fact that Eri was able to help rewind Deku's arms in this moment, the implication is that Eri may not be able to use her quirk in the future, so even though we do not have permanent consequences now, we may have lasting consequences in the future, and that is also why I'm okay with this. But yeah, that's all I really have to say for this chapter, and let me ask you this. What did you think of the chapter? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Do you like the fact that Eri had the ability to return Deku's arms this early on from the last chapter? Or would you prefer something different? And do you think that this individual that they're about to fight is actually all for one or maybe someone else? Leave your thoughts down below and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Do all that cool jazz and hopefully I'll be able to get you in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.